Adnock Gas raises its IPO offering, and Abu Dhabi's IPIC pays a $1.8 billion Malaysia settlement. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Adnock will raise the stake in Adnock Gas that's being offered in an IPO to 5% from 4% due to robust investor demand. The price range for Adnock Gas is between 60 and 70 cents per share, giving it an equity valuation of between 47 and 50.8 billion dollars. Adnock would raise roughly 2.54 billion dollars at the top of that range. The final offer price is set to be announced on March 3rd, while listing and trading should start on March 13th. Abu Dhabi's International Petroleum Investment Company and its unit Abar Investments have agreed to pay $1.8 billion to settle a legal dispute over the scandal at Malaysian state fund 1MDB. Malaysia filed a challenge in a London court against a settlement agreement between 1MDB and the Abu Dhabi company. It was negotiated in 2017 during the premiership of Najib Reza, who is now serving 12 years in jail for a 1MDB-related corruption case. Malaysia argued the 2017 settlement agreement was procured by fraud. Saudi fertilizers maker Sabic Agrinutrients saw a 92% year-on-year surge in its 2022 net profit to $2.7 billion thanks to higher volume sales and higher prices. The net profit surpassed analyst estimates of $2.6 billion. Sales revenue also jumped 97.9% year-on-year to $5.1 billion. In 2022, Sabic Agrinutrients started selling its own products and those of subsidiary companies, which is expected to prop up its revenue as well as logistics expenditure. Previously, Sabic sold the company's products. Switzerland's financial regulator has investigated 12 banks and launched enforcement proceedings against two of them in relation to corruption charges against Lebanon Central Bank head Riyad Salemi. The regulator says in the context of Lebanon, FINMA carried out investigations at approximately a dozen banks, adding that in two cases FINMA opened enforcement proceedings. Lebanese authorities charged Salema, his brother Raja and one of his assistants with money laundering, embezzlement and illicit enrichment after months of delay in this high-profile case. Asian markets sang today following Friday's Wall Street sell-off as U.S. inflation data reinforced expectations the Federal Reserve will continue to raise interest rates for some time. The report on the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index followed blockbuster jobs figures and data showing prices coming down slower than hoped. This month's readings have wiped out optimism that the Fed will pause its rate hikes. Tokyo, Hong Kong and Shanghai all ended lower today. And that's reflected in today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires ranking, where our biggest loser today is Japanese retail module Tadashi Yanai, down a whopping $18.7 billion today, with net wealth of $11.4 billion. Our second biggest loser today is Gautam Adani, who continues his decline, down $1.9 billion today, with net wealth of $33.4 billion. And our third place loser is Australian mining billionaire Andrew Forrest, down $1.3 billion today, with $19.3 billion remaining. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. Japan will purchase 400 Tomahawk missiles from the U.S. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said today as his government beefs up defenses. Earlier this month, Japan announced it set aside $1.5 billion to buy the missiles in the coming fiscal year. Kishida's government wants to dramatically expand Japan's defense capacity in the face of China's growing military clout and nuclear-armed North Korea's unpredictable missile tests. Russia's war has also stoked fears that China may take over Taiwan. And Elon Musk has for years teased the world with his dream of an affordable electric car. This week, fans hope he'll explain what he has in mind and perhaps how he can afford to build it. Musk said last year he shelved the plan for a $25,000 car as he hasn't mastered the new battery tech that's crucial for the cheaper cars. The low-priced car is expected to be announced at Investor Day this Wednesday, along with plans for factory expansion and capital spending. This is the Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you soon.